Uh, it's good to be able to talk about it because under NCAA rules for eight years, the university has not been able to talk publicly about the allegations. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a relief because we still have a lot of work to do and uh, we're working hard and moving forward, but there's a lot of work still to do. What's your, what's your big picture of ass assessment of what this report showed you, what the university need to learn about how to operate in a, in a more effective manner? I think uh, a lot of work has been done long before the report came out. It was an eight-year investigation, so a lot of the things in the report have been addressed and responded to years ago and in many ways fixed. Uh, so I've been mostly focused on academic integrity issues arising from incidents that occurred in 2012 and how we uh, create a culture of compliance on the athletic side and integrity on the academic side going forward so no one questions Syracuse as being a university that has the highest standards in those areas. Why is that important to you? You know, people go to the Carrier Dome, they pack it with 30,000 people, cheer for great games, winning teams, championship teams. They don't seem to be concerned about academics while they're watching the game. Why, why do you think that's important? Well, our primary mission is to our students and to the student experience. And what our students come here for is an all-round experience, sure, that includes athletics and seeing great teams compete, but also getting a degree that means something and where there is exquisite attention to detail in academic integrity and what that meaning is and the substance of it. So anything that casts doubt on that, even if it is just one student athlete on one paper, is of great concern to me and should be of great concern to everybody in the community. Was that not understood prior to your arrival here on campus? I think it was widely understood. I think we actually have a pretty good history at this university of of academics and academic integrity in a system that works well. Uh, but the particular incident involved, uh, the NCAA faulted us with follow through, even when people with the right values care about it. Uh, there, there has to be attention of everybody so that uh, someone with bad intent is discovered, is questioned, and is straightened out before it does damage to the student or the university. You're speaking of the, the incident uh, regarding the season where Fab Mello was suspended, the, the player that's uh, student number seven, I think, in the report. At that time, the university had already self-reported in 2007. The investigation had been going on for five years. Still, this incident happened. The athletic director was involved in a meeting to rally the troops to find a way to get this player back on the court. Um, subsequent year, more similar issues going on with students getting assistance, student athletes getting assistance with papers. Still, it had been self-reported. Everyone in the athletics department knew that they were being watched, yet this still happened. Yesterday, the athletic director was removed from his position and put in a different position. The head basketball coach has not been removed. He's been given three more years to coach the team. How do those two things fit together? Well, first of all, uh, I think it's important that the decisions that were made and were discussed yesterday uh, be clear that they were made because of what, what is in the best interest of the university going forward. And what's in the best interest of the university going forward clearly is to make sure that an incident like the one uh, you described does not happen again. Uh, obviously many people would do things differently in hindsight in 2012 than were done. That said, I've learned it's, uh, as chancellor uh, that there's lots of hard decisions to make every day and a lot of details to pay attention to. And getting every call right every day is a challenge. What we need to have going forward is attention to detail every day to make sure that we are in compliance, not just with the fairly complicated NCAA regime, but with a wide range of practices and laws that assure our students and our student athletes are treated right. Uh, and that requires great attention to detail going forward. I took that into account in, in discussions over a long period of time with Dr. Gross about the right match for athletic director in the years going forward and concluded that his extraordinary strengths uh, would be better contributed elsewhere in the university than there. Um, and there are extraordinary strengths that Dr. Gross has. Uh, we wouldn't be in the ACC without him. 
uh, a great academic conference as well as an athletic conference. We wouldn't have recruited extraordinary coaches and be so strong, including in Olympic sports now. And we wouldn't have the extraordinary relationships we now have with many of our student athlete alumni and with influential figures in sports around the country. Uh, that's a great talent and set of skills that we can use well in the university going forward, including in the classroom. Uh, right now for athletic director going forward, I'm very focused on attention to detail and compliance. And, and we need to hire a great athletic director uh, with a partial focus on that. You also asked about Coach Beheim, and what I want to say to that is I have had a lot of conversations with Coach Beheim before and after the issuance of the report, and the decision on Coach Beheim to announce his retirement in three years was a mutual decision that uh, was based on what was fair to all the stakeholders in Syracuse athletics, and those include the coaches, the potential students that we would recruit and the current students here. Uh, it's very unusual for a coach to announce a retirement this far in advance. Most coaches don't because it's often not in their interest to do so. That Jim was willing to do that shows that he put some of those stakeholders ahead of himself and their ability to plan uh, in a fair way uh, around it. And I think that's a good solution and an appropriate solution. And with regard to that, though, the NCAA report <clears throat> says about the coach that he failed to promote an atmosphere of compliance, monitor the activity, activities of his staff when the director of operations freely committed academic fraud, he was involved in student athletes receiving ac academic extra benefits and violations involving his student athletes, and staff stem from their relationships with the representative. You, you know what it says, you've seen that report. I have. How does that, how does that fit, though, with than retaining the coach for three more years if, if over a period of 10 years this is what was going on. I want to say three things with respect to that observation, Matt. Uh, first, uh, I know Coach Beheim is going to respond to the report later this morning in a press conference and, and I know that he cares deeply about compliance and deeply about student athletes and I think he'll speak to that this morning. Uh, second, uh, we do not agree with all findings and all penalties in the report, and we will be talking about that when we file an appeal, which we have committed to do. I have said that should Coach Beheim decide to appeal, we will support him in his appeal. So I think there's more to be said about some of those findings than has been said so far, and I want to let Coach Beheim be the first person to speak to it. But the third thing, and the most important thing to say, is that as chancellor, I need to look at a whole record of a person over a whole career. And uh, it is the case that over a career of decades at Syracuse University, Coach Beheim, in my view, has shown extraordinary loyalty, attention to detail, and care for his student athletes. I realize that in reading this NCA report, it paints a picture of Coach Beheim. It's not a picture I entirely agree with. And I think the respect for what he's done for this university and for student athletes at this university requires us to be a little more measured and have a broader perspective than the NCAA report has. With regard to coaching, you did not mention who will take his position after three years. Was Mike Hopkins purposely left out of that news release or for any particular reason? Uh, no, Mike Hopkins was not purposefully left out. Uh, I, I think the world of Coach Hopkins, uh, I think he's been loyal and effective at Syracuse University. Candidly, uh, we've got a head coach, and we've got a head coach for the next three years, uh, and we have many issues to deal with in connection with the NCAA report. Uh, I think there's going to be plenty of time to work with Coach Hopkins and which, with Coach Beheim and with the Board of Trustees on succession planning. I just haven't been spending my time on that right now. Do you still expect that he'll be the next coach? I expect that uh, I will be talking directly to Coach Hopkins and with the board leadership on that issue, but I haven't done that yet. With regard to a name that's missing, well, all the names are missing from the report by design, yeah. 
but the position, the position of chancellor is not mentioned. It, would, would anything like this ever occur on your watch, do you think, to the extent over a long period of time as it did under Chancellor Cantor? Uh, I've been chancellor for a year, and I appreciate so much more uh, the range of problems and issues that come across your desk every day and how hard it is to get every call right. And so the main lesson I've learned from that year's experience is judge not lest ye be judged. Importantly, uh, I assume every chancellor has tough, tough decisions to make and, and a, a million of them to make a day. Uh, so I would not presume to say anything about how everything happened in the past. All I can say is about the future is that what I've learned from this experience is that I've got a 24-7 job in which I have to pay exquisite attention to detail and to the people working for me and with me and being supportive of a culture of compliance at every step of the way. Uh, I'd like to think this could never happen again, uh, but that would be hubris. Uh, I think what I have to say is that uh, exquisite attention to detail and having multiple people check on things and have a culture where they are willing to speak up is what I'm hoping to have here. And I think I, we've done a lot of progress to get to already. Yeah, just two more questions. One's very specific and one a general, which will be a good wrap up. The, the specific would be, um, the report was at least the NC State game was the next game. Did you or your administration offer Coach Beheim advice about whether he should talk after that game or whether he should delay that? Um, I talked with Coach Beheim throughout the process, including after the report came out. Um, and uh, certainly, uh, Coach Beheim should not take sole responsibility for his decision to have Coach Hopkins speak after the last game of the season. We talked about it directly. And finally, uh, how would you like the community to view this institution as you start to develop more and more your academic vision and what this institution is going to mean for Central New York in the future? I'd like the community to know that Syracuse University is dedicated to being here and to being successful in what it undertakes to do, both in academics and in athletics. We can be so much more than we are now, and we are now a fine university. Uh, athletics is going to be an integral part of that, as it has been recently and will be in the future. Uh, this has been a hard time uh, that has led some, some to question whether uh, the highest level intercollegiate athletics belongs at Syracuse University and belongs uh, here. And I believe it does and it will. We just have to do it to the highest standards, and I believe we will. Thank you.